Hello, I'm Atuba Judge and I'm so blessed to be bringing God's truth to you today. Praise God. Before going to today's broadcast, can we demand for our daily bread? Now, please take this seriously. It's your right. Not only is it your right, Jesus commanded. You know, that's when we say obedience. When we say continue, that's exactly what we're doing. And I don't think it's necessary. Come on now. Jesus said, ask God to give you this day your daily bread. Why is it difficult to obey him? And you know, you know, sometimes believers have a von, very funny mentality. There is this mentality of I can do it all by myself. So I I I, I don't need, you know, I think I was talking to you sometime last week. You know, you find people who feel I don't think it's it's okay to, you know, they think in their mind. See, there are people who think as ministers, we we look on to other people to help us. If you're a preacher and that's what you do, you'll be making a big mistake because <laughs> of course you will soon go into error. It's as simple as that. You will soon because when you keep looking at people, then you now start looking at how to, you know, make it so that people can give to you. You start looking at how to deceive people. You will not think, oh, I'm deceiving people. Just say, hey, let me let me say it this way so that they will understand. No, but when, when your trust is in the Lord. And are we all not supposed to be trusting in God? And yes, we're all supposed to be trusting in God, but you know, you know, sometimes there is no, you know, trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean to your own understanding. Now, that's the mistake a lot of people are doing, leaning to their own understanding. And let me tell you the truth, your understanding can carry you on for 40 years or even more. And after 40 years, God will look at you and say, you will not enter into my rest. It is not the movement that matters. It's not what you are doing that matters. It's, it's if you're going to enter into the rest. It, this, the, the, I call nephra. It's not even the miracles you experience along the way, brothers and sisters. The children of Israel, I, I'm going into teaching already, praise God. Can we just pause and call for that daily bread? So we'll just run immediately. Say, Father, I demand from you right now my daily bread, and it's coming to me. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. You know, you know the, the more you, you study the scriptures, the more you see certain things about God that you can only help but question. I mean, you cannot help but question. See? So, the, 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 the folks that left Egypt, they left Egypt by the mighty hand of God. God saved them. He delivered them from Pharaoh. He delivered them from the hands of the Egyptians. He led them to the Red Sea. Okay? He parted the Red Sea. They crossed on dry ground. No one drowned. No record of anyone drowning. See, the Egyptians came after them and drowned. They needed water. They got water from the rock. They were fed with manna. They saw God deal with their enemies. They saw miracles. One time they said, we want meat. God gave them meat. For 40 years, God was showing up in these people's life every day. You don't tell me that kind of person is not in God's will. I <laughs> get to what I'm saying. Yet, after 40 years, God shook his head and said, These people are so stubborn, they cannot enter into my rest. What? And, and, and God sealed it, said, No way, they won't enter into my rest. And they didn't. They entered into the promise, and that, that's the mistake people make. People think um, maybe that's not what God meant because they still entered into the promised land. The promised land was not the rest. They were supposed to find rest in the promised land. Understand? They were supposed to find the rest 
in the promised land. Ah, yeah. You see, you no, know, there, there are things I will just say as a, I mean, just say as a passing statement, but to throw you off balance. You know, but then, like we read right yesterday, Jesus said, if you would do, anyone who would do his will, he will know the doctrine that it's of God. Now, what does that mean? If you're doing the truth, the Holy Spirit, who's the one who administers the truth, will teach you the doctrine. Now, so I said, these folks, don't just judge yourself that you are right because of what you are doing. You've got to be careful to know what is his mind. You know, I was talking to some of my leaders a few, you know, last week, yeah. And I'm like, picture this. When David went to carry the Ark of the Covenant, okay, and he got the best carts, he got the best horses, and got the best soldiers. These men carried the ark from the ground or wherever it was and put on that cart. Nobody died. Okay. And they transported this ark on that cart and some soldiers were sitting by it and just making sure everything is fine. And then they got to this church in floor that the ark, the cart shook and the ark was about to fall. And a man named Uzzah wanted to help the ark from falling. This man's intentions were right. And his church was his hand to catch the ark from falling. And the Lord smote him and he died. The Bible said the Lord smote him. Okay. And then you wonder what, what kind of thing is that? And he died. Now, when David got the news, because of course, when that happens, everybody stop. <laughs> and David got the news. They don't bring the ark this way. Take it somewhere. So, so these men had to still drive that ark and the next man sitting there didn't die. They got, they drove that ark to a, man, a house, the house of a man named Obedidon. They carried that ark and dropped it in his house. See, nobody died. And the ark was there and this man began to prosper. The ark was in the wrong place because the ark was not supposed to be in his house. The ark was in the wrong place, yet the man was prospering. This same ark killed another man. This same ark was carried by the Philistines. Think about it. So you now wonder, okay, so what was it about Uzzah that he had to die by the anger of God? The fact that something is okay with one person doesn't mean it's okay with you. You yourself have to know what is the mind of God. Eventually, because David went to you know, find out from the Lord, okay, what did I do wrong? And then in their search, they found out that God had already prescribed how the act should be carried. So David said, oh, now we know. So they went to do the right thing, got the priest, and they went to carry the ark on, on, on their shoulders and, and all that. So that's how they finally brought the ark to its resting place. But you see, a man got blessed in the process. As long as the ark was in his house. The same ark that killed another man that was trying to save it. Now, the children of Israel walked with God 40 years in that wilderness, seeing the miracles of God for 40 years, yet God was displeased with them. So the things we rejoice about may just not be the things that get gets God excited. See, doing miracles is sweet. Every preacher wants to, I mean, you just love to, you know, let the supernatural flow around you. It's, it's beautiful, it's sweet. But that's not the proof of God's backing in your life. That's not the proof of God being pleased with you. It's something you have to learn the hard way. And I pray you don't learn it the hard way. I pray you learn and just begin to align your ears to the Lord. Because, because from what, what I know about the Lord, if your heart is sincere towards him, if you want, if your heart, the, the priority of your heart is to do his will, then you'll find out that the Lord is always correcting you. I've seen several corrections from the Lord. I'm telling you the truth. Things I thought were sweet, beautiful. He just showed up and said, eh, Oga, it's not me. I didn't do that. 
Bawa dole wajud dah tinggi. Like, but, but, see, now, like I said, Jesus said, if you continue, you will know the truth. And then he said in, in chapter 7, verse 17, if you will do his will, you will understand the doctrine. Now, how does that work? Now, continuing means doing, okay? Continuing means obeying. Because you cannot continue with Jesus if you don't hear his voice. No, you cannot continue. You cannot know the will of God if you don't know the voice of God. There is no way you're going to know the will of God. And two, you can, three, you cannot know the truth if you don't hear the voice of God. Because the only person that can teach you truth is the Holy Spirit. And, and now that's the same poem called the Spirit of Christ. And he doesn't just come and teach you the truth. You've got to be a doer first. It is in your doing that you will now begin to understand. Because while you're doing it, he'll be correcting you if you go wrong. See, now, he said, if you hear, if you, if, you, if you go the wrong way, you hear a voice, man, he says, stop, this is the way walking it. Now, you hear that voice, stop, don't go that way, go in this way. Like, oh, why? Why, why didn't I go that way? Hey, Lord, what, what's wrong about that way? I thought that was the right way. Then he shows up and begins to reveal his truths to you. Now, the moment he reveals his truth to you, you remember what John told us in 1 John chapter, chapter 2, and I think verse 27 or 28. He says, the spirit that is in you, he's your teacher. And as he has taught you, you should abide in it. Okay? Now, when, when, when you obey the instructions he gives to you, every child of God must have a personal walk with the Holy Spirit. And like I said yesterday, sometimes we start from the general walk, so we do the things we all do. But you see, as we're doing those things, now that's where you begin from. Going to church, having, going to the gathering of believers, and those, are, those are important things you do. But then, in doing that, don't just get carried away with the crowd. Make sure in the midst of all that you are following Jesus. So anywhere you sit, now this is how you will never go astray. This is how you will never be led in error. This, this is just how you, I remember my, 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 my dad, my biological father, he, he taught me this many years ago. And somehow it just stuck in my heart. You know, then he, he had called me and, and, and sat me down and said, look, sit down. I want to teach you something. And so I sat down. An old man wants to talk to you, so you better listen. Praise <laughs> God. And he's a godly man. So he said, when you follow a preacher, when you follow a minister that you believe in, he said, this is how you follow him. And he made this uh, this sign in his hand. Okay, he said, now this is the preacher and this is you. And while you're looking at the preacher, remember that this is not the person you're supposed to be looking to. There's someone behind him using him. So try in all, by all means, while you're looking at this man to see the one that is behind him. So whatever he says, you're trying to imagine the one who gave him the command to say what he said. And he said, this is the wisdom in it. If for any reason, this preacher you're looking at falls, what happens to you? You get a clearer view of the one you've been trying to see. But if your eyes stop with this preacher, as the preacher goes down, your eyes are going down and see you go down with him. But then when, when you're looking at the one behind him, as, as he's going down, you suddenly begin to see that, hey, I'm trying to see. Hey, I'm beginning to see. I'm seeing the one behind him. Praise God. And then soon, you won't even know that he's gone down. You continue walking with the one that has been behind him. Now that just, this was many years ago. I was still a teenager then. Praise God. And my dad told me that because he, he saw, okay, you're, you're on fire for the Lord. You're, hey, let me just give you this counsel now. And it stuck in my head since that day. And it's the truth. Same thing goes for you. So don't get, don't get mixed up in the crowd. Don't just follow. We are doing this. Yeah, we're doing it. I, I, I would love to do it. 
I'm doing it with you. But as you're going, every step you're beginning to like, okay, Holy Spirit. So why are we doing this? You're not questioning men. Don't, don't, don't get in the habit of question. Sorry, I, until I understand what we're there, I'm not doing. No. You, you, you're like, okay, it's nice, it's fun. We're going for evangelism. Okay, so we're going. And they're like, okay, Holy Spirit, why do we want evangelism? Mm -hmm. Now you're obeying. Last week I talked to you about obedience. Now you're obeying, but then your heart is to know the truth. Then the Lord will visit you and say, this is it, this is it, this is it. Wow. Then you realize that the day every other person will not show up, you will still show up. And you will not say, nobody came, so me, I'm going back home. No. you say, wow, nobody came today, so who's going to? Okay. Well, nobody's here. I'll do the job. And then you go do it. Why? Because you've known the truth concerned. How did you know the truth? You continued and your heart was fixed on him. If any man will do his will, that man will know the doctrine that it is of God and not men. If any man will do his will, that man will know the doctrine. See, marriage is his will. I'll tell you the truth, marriage is his will. Now, how do you say marriage is his will? Because he is the first person. Marriage was his wisdom. I always say this, Adam didn't go to God and say, God, I'm tired. I can't do this work anymore. Please, I need help. And God now said, mm, 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 mm. I'll make you help me. No. It is God that looked at man. And said so that naturally that was the Holy Ghost. Because the Father had created male and female already. But in physical manifestation, we talked about this some weeks ago. In the physical manifestation, the male was made first. Okay. The male and female were created in the same day. But in formation, the male was formed first. And it's the Holy Ghost that looked at man and said, It is not good for man to be alone. At that time, man was really alone. He says, I'll help, I'll make it help suitable, suitable for him. And you know the story, God began forming all the animals, one after the other, and was bringing them to Adam until finally he made the woman. And when he made the woman, she came and, and man looked at her, spent time with her, and then he says, now this is bone of my bone and flesh, and she shall be called woman, because she was taken from man. And then God gave the first law of marriage. It's in that state scripture, it was stated, therefore, see, therefore shall. Now, whenever you see the word shall use, you know, you're dealing with a rule, you're dealing with a law. And also you're dealing with a prophecy. Okay. So it says, therefore shall a man leave his father and mother and shall cleave to his wife and they two shall become one flesh. Okay. Now, so. The man shall leave his father and mother and cleave to his wife. Now, that's the first law of marriage. So you're cleaving. The way a man, when, when you decide to marry, you're making up your mind to obey God. That's what you're doing. And if for any reason you decide to break that marriage, you're breaking the law of God. Yes, you are. Shall Therefore, shall a man leave his father and cleave to his wife. Now you say, I'm going to obey God. I'm going to cleave to my wife. So first of all, your wife has to be cleavable. Praise God. So these are things you're deciding, making your decisions for such. And you're going to cleave to her for the rest of your life. See? For if for any reason you say, I'm not doing it again. I, 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 uh, 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 uh. Remember, you're going to be breaking God's law. Now you see, that's something that has a command to it. So I am choosing to obey this command, okay? Now, while I'm obeying the command, will challenges come? Yes, they will come. But when they come, what do I do? Uh -huh. It's time to know the truth. I said, no, I'm not supposed to uncleave, you <laughs> see? I'm not supposed to uncleave. Whatever happens, uncleaving is not an option. So I have to find a way to work out this challenge and still cleave. 
So that me trying to find a way to work out this challenge, who do I run to? I run to the wisdom behind marriage. That's the Holy Spirit. I run to, I say, Lord, I don't understand my wife anymore. I, I don't quite get, I, she's beginning to irritate me. I don't know what to do. You don't go, Lord, this wife. No, 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 Lord. Not because you are the one holding forth and everything in that marriage is trying to pull your hand away. But you know you're supposed to hold. So what do you do? Cry for help. Lord, I am getting irritated. I don't know what's going on. I, I, my wife is not pretty again in my eyes. I don't know what is going on. And then the Lord... Mm. If you continue, see your mind says, nah, if this marriage doesn't I'll just find my level. I'll just go, I yes, marry another person. What is that? People are getting divorced. Hey, the day God will ask, ask you a question. <laughs> but when you, when you continue, when you abide, why are you abiding? Because God has commanded me to. If any man will do his will, I'm doing God's will. I'm sticking with this marriage. If anyone would do his will, then he will know the doctrine. And I'm trying to hold on. And the Lord says, that's all. This, 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 this. Oh, wow. See, it's not about the situation. It's about your understanding. And my time is up. Praise God. This thing, God loves you. And he's just manifesting it through his word for you. God bless you. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.